Hey, I know this topic about Tandy happened about a month ago. However, when this topic had broke out, my channel was not set up, but I always knew that this was something that I wanted to discuss on my channel because it is a very important conversation. Colorism is something that is very important and I wanted to discuss her situation and also some other situations regarding Hollywood and representation. And I want and that's the main reason why I want to discuss this because it's about representation and that is one of the main core purposes of this channel that and ensuring that we're able to broaden the standard of beauty and the only way I believe we can do that is if we have these uncomfortable conversations therefore we will be discussing discussing Tandy and we will be discussing some other situations and actresses regard in Hollywood and just to give a disclaimer this video is not a about division at all between light skin dark skin or anything like that so if you shall comment please let's be respectful and let's not cause any more division however a conversation has to be had in order to have improvement within the community and also you all will be getting ready with me I will be doing my makeup I am NOT a makeup artist I am NOT sponsored by any of these products therefore I won't be talking about what I like dislike or anything like that y'all will just be getting ready with me if you have a question about anything that I have used, you can follow me, follow me on IG and DM me and ask me. So with that being said, y'all come on and get ready with me. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. So basically, Tandy did an interview with ET Canada and she basically talked about how she always wanted to apologize to darker skinned women for being the chosen one. So <laughs> basically she was like saying how she feels like she's, you know, how darker skinned women feel like she's not a true representation of black people in movies and how it makes her sad because you know her mom is a dark skinned black woman um she's african um i want to say she's from zimbabwe but she's uh i believe she is she's a dark skinned black woman so she feels like it makes her sad. So, but what really got me is when she started going into saying how she's sorry. She was sorry for taking our work. <laughs> she was sorry for taking our truth. And she was sorry for taking our men, child. Taking our men. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. I was like, whoa. I was like, hold up now, Tandy girl. Who man you done took? Because... I don't, you know, although I, I like Tandy as an actress, I actually think she's a good actress. I actually, you know, everything I've seen her in, I, I've never had issue with her acting. But it was just kind of odd to me that she went to talking about, oh, I'm sorry for taking y'all men and different things like that. And then she also talked about how she experienced more prejudice as a light-skinned woman than being a black woman now mind y'all she is from england i believe and so over there whether you light skin or whatever supposedly it doesn't matter you're still um you're still considered dark skin so i guess that's how that works over there but that doesn't work over here you know it's a it's a bit different i i must you know that's how she made it seem like that that's how that works over there and how she had to be overcome her own internal prejudice and stop feeling guilty for accepting roles now that kind of got me because i was just like i cannot personally think of a role that tandy has played that i can say you know what a dark-skinned black woman should have played that I, I i can't think of a role like Maybe y'all know a role she played that maybe a dark-skinned woman would have been better. I, I feel like all the roles she played, it, it really wouldn't have mattered. But I think the role that she was talking about more specifically was um, Crash. 
but to be honest i don't i don't feel like that role as long as a black person played that role now granted she is biracial but in society you know they're still gonna look at her as black white people are in america is gonna look at her as black so i didn't feel like that role just had to specifically go to a dark-skinned black woman now what i start to think about is why are you crying so hard like what is it like did you really take a mess with somebody man and were you kicking with the producers and directors and stuff about how you probably how you had the benefit of getting this role because of your look or something like that and maybe that's why she feels guilty because for me i feel like you should not apologize for how you're born like you're born light-skinned you're born light-skinned. What are you apologizing for? Now, if you were kiki in it with those uh, colorist, racist, white producers or whatever, or black producers that's colorist, you know, whatever, then that's one thing. Then you need to say that. But she never said that. It almost came off as... <sighs> I feel like this apology just really was unnecessary and it perpetuated the stereotype of dark-skinned girls and women being bitter and jealous towards light-skinned women that's such a and i'm not saying that there aren't dark-skinned girls and women that aren't jealous because of course there are but in re but we don't talk about why and not that it's an excuse to ever pick or bully anybody, but there's deeper reasons to why. You know, if you're never picked for anything or looked down upon or told you're ugly because of your skin complexion, you know, that could make anybody feel some type of way. So, my thing is this. Like, is it true that she probably got some roles because her skin is light? Yes. She is the complexion that people in Hollywood prefer to cast as black for roles. Now, y'all told y'all I'm not a professional. I just make it look, I just do what I can. So don't don't come for me if I'm not doing something right now. Don't don't come for me. I'm just doing what I can. It's already hard enough for me doing this while talking to y'all. So, cause I feel <laughs> I don't want no makeup artist coming and telling me and looking at me like, what is she doing? I'm doing what I can. I'm doing what works. But my thing is, Tandy, like, and I think, and I know I'm not the only one who has said this. I feel like everybody done said it. Who in the world asked for this? Who asked for this? I ain't never seen. And this is just from my experience, my experience. I can't speak for everybody, so I'm going to speak for myself and what I've seen. I've just never seen on this internet people coming for Tandy about a role. Now, have I seen people come for others regarding roles in Hollywood? Yes, and we're going to get into that. But I have never seen on this internet or anywhere dark-skinned women come for tandy and maybe they have and i just have not seen it so like i said this is just my own experience you know i can't really speak for everyone do i feel like she is having some sort of light skin guilt yes and do i feel like it's just deeper than uh her not feeling like she represents that she feels that dark skinned women or black women, whatever, feels like she doesn't represent them. I feel like it's deeper than that. I feel like I feel like she was kikiing with them producers. And the guilt has caught up to her. She was back she was back there, probably know she accepted a role. She possibly could have somebody a dark skinned woman possibly could have been um picked for a role and then she somehow turned around and end up getting a role because she was lighter skinned and she took the role but here's the thing 
about being an actor or actress yes you want to start up your career yes you want to accept roles but if you know that this role would be suited better for someone who is black dark skin however um why take the role y'all have the right to turn down roles you have the right actresses and actors turn down roles every day so if you really felt that much guilt why take the role that's my thing I feel like her apology I feel like she definitely does feel guilt and I feel like she definitely was trying to come from a good place Sorry, yeah, I'm looking at my ass coming from a good place but I also feel like she should have did it a different way like the way she apologized almost seemed like it was blaming other people for whatever she did and that's how it sounded to me and maybe and I feel like that's why she got so much backlash I don't feel like she she apologized with ill intentions but I definitely feel like she should have uh, thought that through a little better So, I don't know. But my thing is this. For me, I feel like at the end of the day, unless it's just some blatant role that's, you know, about a real life person or something that a role or a character that really just really specifies, uh, oh, you need to be dark skinned or you need to have you know African features or whatever it may be unless it really specifies that I can't I cannot sit here and say oh she needs to turn down the road you know because at the end of the day if they don't pick her if she says no I can't turn down this role I think it should go to a dark skinned woman she turns it down they're probably gonna go pick another light-skinned woman and guess what nothing really gets resolved it just goes to the next one unless like I said before you know there's situations that no you need to turn that role down and we're um, going to be getting into an actress that definitely should have turned the role down y'all just give me a moment I'm gonna finish my eyes real quick and we're gonna get into it okay y'all so I had to do a little bit more to my eyes and like I said I'm not a professional therefore I needed to focus on a few things especially when it comes to my eyeliner so back to the video let's discuss Zoe Saldana now I know y'all remember that hot mess of a movie Nina that she um starred in I want to say she produced it as well Whew baby <laughs> where do we even start with that one now let's let's in case you forgot sorry I'm looking at my um I'm looking at my um brush I don't know if that's Lynn I hope it's not Lynn I hope I don't get Lenny but um in case you all don't remember some years back about in 2016 there's a movie oh by the way this is cream blush i love cream blush so much more than powder brush not that i still don't use powder powder blush but i don't know cream blush just it just sits in, in the skin a lot better so this is how i usually do mine i just kind of go up like this i'm not a professional though so how you do yours is how you do yours do what works for you so Back in 2016, Zoe Saldana starred in this movie biopic about Nia, Nina Simone. And so there was a lot of backlash and criticism once the trailer came out. Once the trailer came out because Zoe had on blackface. She had a fake prosthetic. She had a prosthetic nose on and this afro wig and all all these other things to make her appear as nina simone 
So basically, people were criticizing it and didn't want to support it basically because it's like, why? Like, why? You're telling me out of all the actresses, black actresses in this world, in the United States of America, you could not find a dark skinned black woman to play Nina Simone. Instead, you'd rather spend the money because I know one thing about Hollywood, it's about the budget. You'd rather spend your budget on making, putting this woman in blackface to make her look like Nina Simone. Come on, y'all. That ain't make no sense. I, I, could, I don't know if India Ari can act, but she would have been, uh, 10 years ago, she would have been great for that role. So it's just, you know, it goes to show you, you know, how Hollywood works. And you know what? With that, I don't put it all on whoever wrote the movie it's on zoe too because zoe was so adamant about playing this character when she knew she should not have taken the role so y'all to give myself a seamless look i i put setting powder on twice so before i think i got enough blush now this looks like a lot but i'm telling y'all it's gonna set in it's gonna set in i put the um red concealer I forgot to talk about that. I had already primed my face before I started. Uh, see, I'll get better with telling y'all that. But these are, um, the red concealer is to to hide, supposed to help hide the black spots on your face so that when your makeup is on, it's seamless. So, like I said, I put a uh, setting powder on my face two times. So, right after I put all my, that concealer and that cream blush, Oh gosh, I put the setting powder on it to to set it and to also give me just a little bit, not too much. I had learned this from um, Jackie Anna, y'all. Like around the time when the pandemic started and people still wanted to wear makeup, but we had those masks on. When she showed this technique about putting the um, setting powder on before you put the foundation on that it helps set your um face and keeps it you know even though my foundations are non-transfer if you don't set your face don't spray your face they will still transfer i don't care what nobody says but you just want to put a little bit even though it looks like i'm putting a lot on it's not a lot on here and it gives us this oh see i'm already starting to look seamless and it's not that not just that it helps uh gives you that seamless look it also Oh, I already said that. I already said it. it gives you a seamless look and it helps it stay on longer. So this is a prime example of what I was talking about earlier regarding using your discernment to pick your roles and to know when to say, you know what? No, I'm not going to play this one. And when it's like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and play this one. Nina should have never been played by Zoe and now she understands that she had an interview i'm not sure if y'all seen it know about it but i'm pretty sure you might do she had an interview maybe a few years ago or maybe it was last year or a year before i don't know and basically the interviewer asked her about oh my god y'all oh yeah yeah the interviewer asked her about um Usually I I put my concealer on top of my foundation, but I don't want to do that today. I'ma just or well, at least the under eye, I'm not gonna do that today. But um they asked her about it and she basically regrets it, you know. She stated that I should have never played that role. I should have had a black woman play this black woman. Crying, crying them tears, y'all. Crying them tears. But I felt her. <laughs> I felt her. But what kind of got me is when she said that I want a black woman to play a black woman. Because although Zoe is, she is black. She's Afro-Latina. But she's not a black American woman. Now she might be, I don't know. I don't know. She's Dominican or something. So I let this sit for a little bit. But um, but not too long, because this one dries down real fast. 
Bob, I think she should have said a black American woman because if, and I believe she does identify herself as Afro-Latina and Afro-Latina is just a black Latina. You have African ancestry just like black Americans has African ancestry, just still black. But anywho, I think that's what she basically meant and that's what she should have done. She should have had a black American woman play that iconic black American woman. However, I don't know whether it was ego, pride, she just felt like I'm just such a fan and I really want to do this. I don't know what it was. However, it should have never been done. It should have never been done. And I do believe she feels some type of remorse. Um, and she did say she would never do anything like that again. And I feel like, um, I feel like she is sincere about that. But I often wonder, had the movie actually done well, would we be getting an apology? Like, because say if the movie would have been a blockbuster hit, you think she would apologize eventually like she did now? I don't know. I, I kind of don't think so. So that's where I'm like, I don't know how to take it. However, we don't know. So she apologized. So it is what it is, child. Because I like her as Gamora. So I'll leave her alone. We all done things that we regret. That's a big regret. But to each his own. Y'all, let me um, blend this in. And I'm going to be right back. Because we're going to talk about some other light-skinned women in Hollywood who should have declined the role. Okay, y'all, so now that I got that concealer blended in, you see how it's coming together? It's coming together. I still have to put on a foundation. So, we was talking about Zoe, but like I said before, Zoe should have declined that role. However, she has apologized since. So, it is what it was. She said she'll never do that again. And I bet she won't. Because she might not get lucky next time. So, um... Now, I know last year, or was it last year or was it the beginning of this year? Well, we said the beginning of this year. I don't know when it was. Whenever this Hulu movie came out on, um, came out on Hulu. <laughs> but The Harder They Fall, I believe that's what it's called. The, the, the cowboy western, the black western movie. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. I think it's called The Harder They Fall. If it's not, I'm sorry. Y'all let me know in the comments. But... Y'all remember the girl, it was a big uproar at, when the movie came out or after it came out about the actress uh, Zay Zay Beats playing stagecoach Mary. Now, when I saw the movie, one, I didn't really look at the promo or really paid attention to any promo regarding it. I didn't even know there was going to be a black western movie until I kept seeing and hearing about it on Facebook. And yes, I still do utilize my Facebook I um and you can follow me on there too at be centric beauty so I didn't really know much about it so I didn't really pay attention to anything up until after I seen it so I seen the movie and I thought it was a pretty decent movie it was good I enjoyed it but after seeing the movie, I start seeing all of these uh, comments regarding Stagecoach Mary, yada, yada, yada. Now, me going into watching the movie, I had no idea these was real life people. I thought this was a fictional, um, fictional movie. I didn't know this was about real people. So after I started seeing the comments and stuff on Facebook, and they were showing a picture of the real Stagecoach Mary, and I was like, so we doing this again? So we're doing this again like i was like what in the world like they didn't even try they just straight up didn't care like they was like listen here this is what we're gonna use and this is why and so the my reasoning why i believe they decided to go with a light skin i believe she's actually biracial actress after now this is all coming to me after I already seen it is because that character she was a strong character but she wasn't like um oh god oh I know y'all know that, that character name the dark skin girl I believe her real name is Danielle I remember she played in like Tyler Perry show or something like that I cannot remember the name of the character but I think her real name is Danielle her character now that that was that girl she did that but um 
Zay Zay's character, Stagecoach Mary, in the movie. Now, in real life, I hear that it was nothing like the movie. She played, she was like a damsel in distress. She played a damsel in distress role. And I feel like they utilized a lighter skinned woman because, I'm sorry, y'all know y'all looking like, how long is she going to blend this uh, foundation? But that's how you get your face smooth. That's how you get it get this smooth look and I pat it so it does take me a little bit longer because I don't want to move my concealer not that much I kind of do know I don't want to move my concealer and y'all know I have used the cream blush so I don't want to move the cream blush so I'm trying and I'm trying to make sure I get all these spots so it doesn't look and try to stay in view too she was a damsel damsel in distress character and I believe they utilize her because Hollywood does not, Hollywood and society do not view dark skinned women as feminine and they for darn sure don't view dark skinned heavy set women as feminine. And since they wrote that character as a damsel in distress, the love interest of the dark skinned man. There was no way they was going to have a heavy set dark skinned woman play a damsel in distress uh, side by side with this dark skinned man. They wasn't having it. They don't believe that it sells. They don't believe it looks good. They don't like the way that look. And to me that is exactly why they used a light skinned slash biracial woman. Because they did that typical lineup. Dark skinned man, light skinned woman. You know how they do. So. I don't know. By the looks at the end of the movie, there is going to be a sequel, probably, by the way they left it. But I think that's why people get tired. It's like things like that. It's like the blatant colorism. Like, it's just blatant. It's like y'all didn't even try. And y'all not going to tell me y'all couldn't find any actresses that that looked like Stagecoach Mary. Now, see, if Stagecoach Mary was a fictional character, I would have thought nothing of it. It would have been like, okay, whatever. I mean, I would have still noticed the colorism, but it would have been that big of a deal because it's a fictional character. But this is a real-life person. And you did this real-life person no justice by casting her as someone that is the total opposite look of her. How is that an honor? How are you honoring that person this is a real person there's no honor in that it's a slap in the face i wish i would uh pass away and y'all cast me as some um light skin curly hair girl y'all bet not if i ever become that important y'all better not let that happen okay y'all so i had put on some setting powder under my eyes i use like a honey color setting powder translucent powder under my eyes the all the areas that i had used the concealer that's why i used it that's what i use on the concealed parts so like i said i want to do the bridge of my nose and my forehead after i put my foundation on y'all see that it looks a lot smoother but you still see how you still kind of see that um uh, what you call it the blush the cream blush is still there but it's like real soft real subtle it's real nice but like i said y'all don't let if i ever get important enough don't let them people cast me as somebody that y'all know don't look like me sure who knows 30 <laughs> they might try to cast me as a whole white woman don't let them do that don't let them do that but like i said before it's like I don't know what these cat because I'm not privy to the information so I'm not sure what these casting um calls are looking for a lot of times but what I do here is that oh child I gotta blend that good but what I do um here is that a lot of times that's what they put on the sheets that they're looking for you know that they're looking for a light-skinned person and honestly if you're a light-skinned person and that's what it says on the sheet that they're looking for a light-skinned person i mean i can't be mad that they go out for the role because like i said before if they don't cast you they're going to cast somebody and they're going to cast somebody light-skinned and then what does it do, is there any resolve however you shouldn't take the role because of your integrity but you know everybody ain't got that you know, some of us just out here trying to make it, I guess. So, 
it is what it is but you're gonna get the backlash so don't get mad when we talk about your behind because we're gonna talk about you because you should have chose better anywho ooh, see how that blends do it does it blend oh let me fix my nose y'all oh shoot I just messed up my nose a little bit but it's okay it's okay but then you have others like uh Zendaya who who repeatedly speaks out about representation in Hollywood for black women and also more specifically dark-skinned women and um I believe I read where she advised her agent to not book her or to not uh send her scripts that are meant for black women i don't know if it's for black women or specifically dark-skinned women i'm not sure i believe she said send her roles that would be that are typically for white women because she doesn't want to take up that space i wonder how this look on camera y'all does this look like too much now i ain't trying to make my nose look skinny i just want a little definition a little definition so I'm not used to like looking in the camera and doing my makeup but yeah so she said that she doesn't want to take up space for black women and I could commend her on that because you know what someone has to be the one to speak up and speak out now I'm not saying we need light-skinned women to be dark-skinned women saviors by any mean necessary I do not believe that I believe we are very capable of speaking for ourselves and uplifting ourselves but at the end of the day we are a community of black people black women we stick together and I know Zendaya is biracial however she's still in the mix so she's still in the mix she's still you know i believe she still identifies herself as a biracial black woman i believe i'm not sure so i just feel like at the end of the day we all have to work together it's not just on dark-skinned women it's on light-skinned women too if you know there's an opportunity that is better suited for someone who's a darker complexion and vice versa whatever the situation is we got to come together we got to come together i don't believe it should be like you know because some people believe that zendaya is pandering and i don't know about that i i can't sit here and say this woman is pandering to black women I feel like like I said somebody has to help and I don't I don't want to get caught up in the that light-skinned women like I said are our saviors but I also want to make sure that we're all doing the work to make sure that we broaden this standard of beauty and ensure that there's representations for all shades of black all our shades because all of us are beautiful and very much talented I don't believe a light-skinned woman shouldn't get a role just because she's light-skinned unless I said you know you know the reasons unless I understand that we're not going to get complexions down to the T no one's asking that this person be like boom boom exact complexion but when you have a very very light-skinned woman playing a very dark-skinned woman that doesn't make sense it doesn't make a lick of sense sorry y'all I gotta blend this a little better because I want to make sure is showing right it doesn't make sense so then you have then you have people like um jordan peele jordan peele is it's a little different it's not about colorism but he is a man who he is a, a actor producer director all of that stuff that he said that you know he's gonna make sure that no, he said in all of his movies, hold on y'all, let me make sure I got the right color. All of his movies will have black leads. I commend him on that. Like I said, he's a biracial black man. And are we going to say, oh no, you're pandering. No, he. I don't believe he's pandering. I believe at the end of the day, if you identify yourself as any type of black, then you need to, this is the um, complexion translucent powder that I'm putting all over my face. If you identify yourself any type of way as black, then you your job is to help help the system, help us do better, 
and build us up and do what we do what you have to do and do what you can do on your part and i feel like now that he has uh this leverage he's using it as he should as he should and all those that that it's not about light skin dark skin when you have black people that has that that have that type of leverage and make those type of decisions and can make those type of decisions you have a better chance of creating a diverse look to the movies and i know we like to say oh it's just entertainment it's just this and this and that but y'all for real for real it's representation at the end of the day entertainment influences us and this culture especially this culture we live in now this is a celebrity culture influencer culture they soak everything in everything in and, and so did we and people before us who had tv it's just what it is i'm trying to i probably shouldn't be doing it that way but this is how i do it and you definitely got to get those smile lines because you don't want no creases. So get those smile lines. Everyone has to play their role. And he's in a good position, a leadership role where he can make those decisions and he should make those decisions. Because, because we need to ensure that we are showing all shades of black. Period. All right, y'all. I didn't use a contour around my sides today. I really don't feel like all that. So what I'm doing is I'm bronzing instead of contouring. Which is kind of the same thing, but not really, I guess. Oh, shoot, I messed up my own eyebrow. So I, this adds a little warmth. I hope I didn't do too much. I usually use a one that has more of a redness, redder in it, but I don't know what I put. So this is what I have right now. But I like this one too. Y'all still see how that blush? Y'all see that blush? <laughs> see, it just looks like it's in my skin. It just that's 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 why I'm like a big fan now. This cream blush because I did this because if you got a double chin, it can make your chin look your chin look more defined. When you put a little bit under it like that. I learned that from somebody. I don't know if I have from Jackie Ion or Maya Galore. It's a few people I watch. Uh, Andrea, Renee. And what's that other girl? She's so pretty. She's Muslim. I think her name is Aisha. Aisha Haran. I believe that's her name. Those are the people that I typically watch. For certain looks and things like that. And Jackie Arna, of course, I think I said earlier. Ooh, do I need more bronzer? Or how is it looking? So, uh, so colorism is a big thing. And I am actually going to get into, this video wasn't, talk, wasn't to talk about in depth of actual colorism, but talk about colorism. But I'm going to be doing other videos because there are so many layers to that topic and one video isn't going to do this was more so to talk about uh how you know how light skin privilege basically in hollywood and how a lot of lighter skinned women that took on roles uh are feeling guilty for taking those roles and how people in hollywood light skinned women the producers the directors all of them have a responsibility to ensure diversity I get it. It's easier to see things hindsight, but you have to take have to take a moment when you're this is for anyone who's up and coming and anyone who happens who's already famous and happens to see this. Like take a moment and think about it. Think about the role you're playing. If you know you're playing a real life character and that lady is is not light skinned by any means, just just be mindful when you're taking roles. Um Y'all give me one second. Let me uh, put on these lashes. Because I can't talk to y'all put on these lashes. So give me a moment. Okay, y'all. So I had to put on the lashes. Um, I got to put a little bit more on. Now that I see myself. I had to put on lashes. I could not put on them lashes. And talk to y'all. See how it makes my eyes like it. Oh, I know I messed. I might. You know what? I ain't even going to point it out. Because if you don't see it, then it don't matter. So I'm. 
I still use highlighter. I know I did already put a little bit on, but I want to put a little bit more on. I read, no, I didn't read somewhere. I saw somewhere on TikTok where they said it was out of style. For who? Because I'm still going to wear it. I'll put a little bit on my forehead. I'll put a little bit on my chin, a little bit right here. So I want to put my lips on. It kind of stands out. And so we got to uh, have people in positions of power who can who can ensure that there are diversity there are di there is diversity in what we see on our screen just like if y'all have noticed Bel Air Bel Air ensured that they didn't make that same mistake they made in the 90s they made sure this family was going to be black and that it was going to look like a real family and not that the last family wasn't black of course they were black and it was just how they switched the roles and how they changed the character to fit what a typical light-skinned woman is. They look at light-skinned women as more feminine and demure and things like that. And that's how they changed Aunt Viv's character in a sitcom. But no, they made sure that she uh, was a dark brown-skinned woman in this one in the pretty much the, all, the family is. You know, Ashley's a little on the lighter spectrum, but at the end of the day, that happens. When you're black, you can come out any complexion. I feel like the show is really showing what real blackness look like. Not just in the family, but even when you look at the show. When you look at people at the functions, there are so many different shades. When we go to functions in our real lives, you don't just see a whole bunch of light-skinned people. Or even just a whole bunch of dark-skinned people. You see at all them and uh dark skin people and those in between you see so many different colors of brown to where you don't notice it because it's just diversity and that's how it should look it should look so diverse to we don't even recognize colorism but it's gonna of course take way more than hollywood to uh to help get rid of colorism because it's so much just deeper than that it but it definitely plays a role because representation like i keep saying is very important it matters because our kids watch these things they watch these things and they internalize it they internalize it whether we want to believe it or not it's just what it is because we are all but you know we have to do better in society Hollywood has to do better, the music industry, just anything. We, we just have to do better as a whole. So, y'all, so the last thing I have to do is my lips. And I decided I want to do a purple lip. So, I want y'all to let me know what y'all think about all these situations what do you think about the tandy situation do you think her apology was sincere did you all ask for this apology and i don't know what do you think she was trying to accomplish for it from it do you think, feel like how, how I feel is that something happened behind the scenes? Like she could have possibly did some grimy stuff and now she's just feeling all the guilt for it? What do you think about Zoe's apology? Do you feel this sincere? Do you feel like I feel? Like possibly if the movie had done well, would she have really apologized? I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I don't know about that. I wonder sometimes, but it's neither here nor there because she did apologize, but curious minds want to know. Y'all, I like to make sure my lip is sharp. Anybody who knows me know I don't play about them lips. They got to be sharp. They got to look right when I line them. Look right when I line them. Sometimes I put a base color down, but I don't think I'm going to do that today. Like I said, I know a lot of these topics I talked about could be considered old news. But like I said, at the end of the day, the topic of colorism, the topic of representation, the topic of broadening the standard of beauty, those are ongoing. But I utilize these topics to speak on that. And I will be getting more into depth about colorism, how we all as a society play a role in it. What exactly is it? Who benefits from it? Who is oppressed from it? And 
all of it won't be in one video because it's like I said there's so ooh, I love this color mix with that there are so many layers to it and some people choose to help the situation like maybe somebody like Zendaya where she's trying to utilize her leverage that she has in the industry to ensure that oh shoot see I always gotta mess up where she's trying to ensure that darker skinned black women or black women in general are getting their roles so she wants to go up for roles that are for white women she is racially ambiguous so she really could go for either but um yeah i still do that because sometimes it's still getting on my teeth Ooh. so what do you all think i'm gonna be right back let me let me do something on my hair so i can at least look like something at the end of this video just give me a second okay you guys so this is the final look i just put my hair up in a high ponytail nothing special threw on some earrings i hope you all like it i hope you all enjoyed getting ready with me and i hope you all enjoyed the topic that we discussed like i said i know this topic is a little uh the situation with these people are a little old but the topic is very relevant we're here to broaden the standard of beauty and we're here to have these uncomfortable conversations so be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you are you are aware of when I upload new videos and also be sure to share the content and like it and leave a comment let me know what you think I need to know you all's perspectives and different things like that it also helps with creating new content and new discussions from different points of views so as always be beautiful be black be you always